Here's Brody Brazil. I'm not exactly sure that you're expecting me to say this, but if I'm being completely honest, I hope the San Francisco Giants can land Shohei Otani. Or at the very least, make their best offer, attempt, and effort to secure baseball's unicorn for the long term. And yeah, he's a unicorn. Who else has ever done what Otani does on the mound and in the batter's box simultaneously now at age 29? There's a lot of different things at play and elements to discuss here. I'll try and sift through it in no particular order, but let's begin with the Giants as a franchise. And I could go all the way back to the Willie Mays days, but let's begin in more modern times, like the Barry Bonds era. He comes to Candlestick Park in 1993 and forever changes immediately the face of the franchise. They've got a superstar. They're competitive again. They're lined up to go to their brand new ballpark. They're not moving to Tampa. Barry Bonds was a pillar, a cornerstone, and surrounded by great players over time. Let's also make that very clear. The Buster Posey era. Starting in 2009 all the way to 2021, I'm calling it the Posey era, but Lincecum, Bumgardner, I mean, so many alongside the Giants backstop that made that team, those teams, great over the years. And I know you want me to go on and on with the list, but let's just call it the Bonds era from 93 to 07 and the Posey era from 09 to 2021. So if you look at history repeating itself, this franchise is kind of due to have its next big superstar, cornerstone player, basically face of the franchise. They've always done well when they've got somebody established like that who they can build around. And to be perfectly clear, Shohei Otani is that dude. There's no question about it. And again, not promising you playoff um, appearances or World Series titles, none of that. But the reason that these two were successful is because they were great and they were surrounded by great talent. How about this past offseason? The Carlos Correa thing didn't work out. Also, didn't work out for the Mets either. The Aaron Judge thing. <sighs> Was he probably going to sign with the Yankees anyway? Maybe. But I truly feel like his visit to San Francisco was at least legitimate at the time. He just wanted to see and take advantage of the opportunity. But the Giants were serious about landing both of these players. They didn't happen. There's nothing to be upset about. In retrospect, it just did not work. But if this is what your aspirations are, if this is where the bar is set, then I don't see any reason why you shouldn't make your absolute best possible effort to secure Shohei Otani. Now, I'm not saying you should give away the entire franchise or handcuff yourself for like decades to come so that you just can't do anything else. But if there is any possible way, reasonably, legitimately, to get Otani, I think this is the trajectory that the Giants are on. Now, there's two paths to securing Shohei. Number one, and it really depends on how the Angels season goes, really, in the next few weeks. Do they have a chance at contending? Can they be a competitive team? Otani right now is on this one-year $30 million deal. So he's either going to finish the season out and not be traded by the beginning of August and stick with the Angels and that's it. For better or worse, he's theirs the rest of the year. Or Los Angeles is going to try and flip the value of Otani and the rest of this season and wherever he might go and they're going to get a haul in return. There's no question about it. I was talking with somebody the other day, huge background in baseball, all levels, including major leagues. And this person told me that you could trade Otani right now and the expectation by the Angels would be in return. They would almost want like nine pipeline position players that are ready to go. You could almost expect a whole up and coming minor league team in exchange for Shohei Otani, even if it is only a rental type situation. He's that good. He's that pivotal. He's that crucial to a team's immediate success. So I don't know if the Giants are in a position to be a trade partner with the Angels to acquire Otani. You'd have to give up so much. But there's also this. Maybe the team that is acquiring Otani, maybe they're not his permanent long-term fit. Maybe he would just be a rental. 
for a bit. Go somewhere, try and win a World Series, either do it or don't, and then either way become a free agent as of November. Or, like I said before, if the Angels decide that they're not going to trade him, then he's a free agent come November, no matter what. The real question is, do the Giants get cut out of the picture here if another team sells their farm, literally, to get Otani with the expectation that they'll also have first dibs to sign him for the long term? Don't know. Don't know. It's going to play out one of those two ways, which remains to be seen. What does Shohei Otani want out of all this? Now, has not been in the playoffs with the LA Angels, which has to be super frustrating, not only for him, but for Mike Trout. And I'm assuming that they may not make it this year. The AL West is a super tough division. The Rangers are good again. The Astros are still the Astros. The Mariners have dramatically improved. They made the playoffs last year. It's going to be difficult to find a playoff spot. And especially with the AL East being as good as it is, wildcard spots will be hard to come by. But I think Otani instantly wants the chance at a second season. He hasn't got that in Anaheim. And it's not on the horizon. They've tried several different iterations. You've got Mike Trout as your wingmate. And that hasn't worked. And that's definitely, I think, what Otani wants is is to be surrounded and also to find a sustainable future. Two different ways he could go about this. Want to go to a team that's like ready to win next season a.k.a. maybe the L.A. Dodgers, even though they've not been out to the fastest start so far. Or he could also want to join a team, and this is where I think the Giants fit in, a team that's close right now, but could only get better over time. You retain some of the good players, you add some more down the line, and maybe that is also enticing to Otani. To be one or maybe two years away, but to be definitely building towards it, I could see that as an option. But no matter what, sustainability. To not go somewhere where the peak is happening, the peak is over after a year, then they rebuild, but you're signed for the long term. I'm pretty sure he does not want that. I think obviously also he wants the best deal possible. Financially, we'll take a look at that in just a second. The dollar amounts, the year amounts, he's 29 years old. So is it a 10-year contract? I don't know. Can you expect him to be pitching and hitting? The entire duration of that contract, I doubt it, especially not starting and hitting. I think at some point he's going to have to take the fork in the road. And maybe there's a bullpen period of his career. Maybe he starts playing first base, hypothetically, as a position and also hits. But more on that in just a second. He's looking for the best deal possible. He's also looking for a place that's marketable, not just the ability to win games, but a place to build your brand. Now, he's in Los Angeles, essentially. Southern California, more specifically. That's a good place to do it. But has he even scratched the surface of marketability? And would the San Francisco Giants not do him the very best in terms of marketing? That's what the franchise does among the best. In all of professional sports, they know how to market things. More on that in just a second, too, but maybe a little flexibility. Again, the sustainability and the flexibility go hand in hand. If it's a place that Otani doesn't want to be, can he get out of it? If it is going to be an eight-year contract and three years in, he can see the writing on the wall, can he get out of that said contract? So as for what to expect, where would the Giants have to be in terms of a deal uh, monetarily and the term wise, Trout gets $426.5 million over a dozen years. And again, at, at 29, is the deal a six year deal? Is it a seven or eight year deal? I don't know. But right now, he's on one year, $30 million. And I think he's going to be AL MVP like he should have been last year this season. Mookie Betts, $365 million over a dozen years. Aaron Judge, 360 over nine. Probably somewhere in that territory, maybe somewhere between Trout and Betts. And I'm only saying that because the years may not match up with Trout and Betts at a dozen years. 
somewhere in that top three in terms of money and years. And that's just what that's just what it's going to be for the Giants or anybody else. I think that's where Otani's going to fit in, right at the top. So what do the Giants need to pull this off? Obviously, they need the money. Secondly, they need that supporting cast. That's going to be attractive to Otani. Again, he's been in Anaheim. He's seen what those teams have been built up to do, what they didn't do. They never put together the right supporting cast. I'm sorry. And that's been a struggle way before Shohei Otani was even an angel. The Angels haven't been in the playoffs since 2014. And before that, I think it was 2009, Mike Trout has played in one playoff series. And I don't think he's ever won a playoff game. That's a shame and that's a crime to baseball, honestly. So Shohei needs to go somewhere that features a supporting cast around him. I also think the Giants would need a long-term usage plan for Otani. Like I said, what he's doing right now is super taxing. And yeah, he can be great at it. He can be on top of his game for a couple more seasons. But at some point, like during a long-term contract, you can't expect him to be starting 27 times and in the lineup still for five days a week. There's going to have to be some changes and alterations made to protect his future and to commit to a long-term plan. So long as the Giants have that idea in mind and they can structure that as part of the deal, great. But you definitely can't go into this looking at him and right now saying, he'll do this forever. He'll do what he's doing forever. Just no offense. (laughs) Like, Mother Nature never loses. Time is always going to catch up to all of us. And last but not least, the Giants marketing team would need to turn their their dial up to 100. On a 0 to 10, they'd need to be at a 100. And think about this. If you're asking, well, is it worth the money for Otani? I'm here to say that put winning and losing aside for just a second, and he's a great player and he will help any team win. There's no question about that. But the marketing you have alone for a player like Otani in a place like Northern California and with a team like the Giants who absolutely know how to maximize his presence, his uniqueness, his story, maybe his personality that we haven't even really seen yet. Even in Southern California, the Angels are SoCal's other baseball team. And with the Padres, I mean... You know, you look at the entire southern half of the state, maybe they're like the third team right now, and they they shouldn't be. But it is what it is. And in San Francisco, I mean, Otani could be huge. There's no question about it. So so from a business sense, not just a baseball sense, let's let's understand that, but also put it aside for a second. From a business sense, this alone would be a tremendous move. So there are some limitations. I, again, I don't want the franchise to break its back to try and get Otani. I don't want them to do something that's regrettable in four years or seven years or eight years or beyond. But you should literally look at your, your ability to sign this player, your maximum ability to sign this player, whatever it is, whatever you think you can possibly give. And also to consider all the revenue that would come with even just having this player wear your jersey. Whatever you think that maximum dollar in commitment you could make to him is, make it. Don't question it. Don't look back on it. Maybe missing out on Correa and Judge were huge opportunities in reverse. Because if those happened, the chance for this would never happen. And I also want to close it out by saying... The Giants are one of several teams that are having these thoughts and this conversation right now. This is not only going to be a tough thing for the Giants to put together, this is going to be tough in terms of competition that everybody else who's in the mix also wants their hands on baseball's unicorn. So that's the video. Thumbs up on it for making it here all the way to the end. You know I appreciate that. Let me know what you think. Do you agree, disagree down in the comment section below? And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I can definitely 
See you next time.